Are you looking for a new recovery-related podcast to add to your playlist? The RRC has recently launched its first podcast titled The Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. In the RRC, the Recovery Revolution community, we have some amazing online meetings, and one of those is our Tao Recovery Meeting. In this meeting, one chapter of the Tao De Ching is discussed every week as to how it relates to recovery. I hope you enjoy this week's podcast episode. Hello, everyone. Buddy C, the, this is the Tao De Ching meeting for the Recovery Revolution community for May 16th, 2019. We have Craig M and Marla H and Moria D. And Kate E. with us today. Hello, everyone. Y'all, Hello. Hello. Let's wake them up. I know it's 8 a.m. Eastern, but uh, good. Kate, did you, uh, any thoughts on what we talked about last week? Did that kind of settle in and soak in a little bit, all of the uh, the yielding and the difference between yielding and being a doormat? <laughs> I'm trying to settle that in. That takes work. Yeah, it takes, it take pra- work. you know, that's practice learning where those, that balance is, you know, <laughs> that truly really is a balance because right. if we're used to uh, letting people, if we're, if we've ever played the victim role, it's easy to, to let that happen if you're not careful. That's tough. That's tough. But that's part of this practice is learning those balances, you know, so. You know, I, with my parents, I was their doormat for quite some time. And, you know, I remember uh, when they got a new puppy, I was working full time and they asked me to train the puppy, even though, and my mother wasn't working. So, you know, I'd run home, run to their house in the middle of the day to train their puppy thinking, what the fuck am I doing, you know? With parents, it's a fine line. It's like, you know, you don't want to disappoint them. Um, but you also need to set boundaries. I needed to really set some boundaries, and that didn't happen until after I had some sobriety the first time around. You, you, you know, for me, all of life is about those boundaries. You know? Yeah. And, and yeah. How can I give without being that doormat? You know, how can I... Uh, how can I walk in love and it be love and not pity or resentment <laughs> or resentment? Right. I don't want to walk in resentment. Yeah. <laughs> that was a no. tough one. No, or fear or fear. They're not going to love me. So I do things for them. That that was the bottom line. You know, it's like, are they going to still love me if I don't train their dog? Yeah. <laughs> We are some fucked up people. I mean, I know I am. (laughs) But we're all sick dealing with sick people, you know? (laughs) It's just everybody's sick. At least we're aware of it. Yeah, you know, so that's good. But uh, stick with that, Kate, because that's important. It's important. Okay, well, let's take a second. Get centered before we start on the 42nd chapter. Good stuff today. Uh, Let's take a moment. All right. What's our email, Marla? I keep, we keep talking, doing that before, and I never, and I forget it when we get going. So the email is uh, wisdom526 at at, uh, gmail. At gmail.com. Good. Okay. You got questions or comments? You want to join us? Go to omarpinto.com and check out the, the uh, Recovery Revolution community. Uh, you can join the community for a dollar for the first month, and it's $12 a month after that cancelable at any time. And for you can, we, we record every um, Thursday at 8 a.m. Cent- uh, 8 a.m. Eastern time. So you're welcome to join us uh, and, and be on the podcast with us. And this is just a recording of the Tao Te Ching discussion for the community. So we'd be happy to have you. Okay, this 42nd chapter, I pre-titled this, My Loss is My Gain. 
or I gain by losing, or when I win, I really lose. <laughs> All those ideas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. So, um, Kate, you want to read for us, and we'll read the four translations and then uh, discuss a little? Yeah. Okay. All right. The Tao begot one, one begot two, two begot three, and three begot the 10,000 things. The 10,000 things carry yin and embrace yang. They achieve harmony by combining these forces. Men hate to be orphaned, widowed, or worthless, but this is how kings and lords describe themselves. For one gains by losing and loses by gaining. What others teach, I also teach. That is, a violent man will die a violent death. This will be the essence of my teaching. Second translation. The Tao gives birth to one. One gives birth to two. Two gives birth to three. Three gives birth to all things. All things have their backs to the female and stand facing the male. When male and female combine, all things achieve harmony. Ordinary men hate solitude, but the master makes use of it, embracing his aloneness, realizing he is one with the whole universe. Third translation. The Tao gave birth to one. The one gave birth to two. The two gave birth to three. The three gave birth to all of creation. All things carry yin, yet embrace yang. They blend their life breaths in order to produce harmony. People despise being orphaned, widowed, and poor, but the noble ones take these as their titles. In losing, much is gained, and in gaining, much is lost. What others teach, I too will teach. The strong and violent will not die a natural death. The final translation. Chapter 42 starts out with some cosmic mumbo-jumbo about Tao making one, one making two, two making three, and three making everything else. I don't know what it means, and frankly, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Let's get to the practical part. Men hate to be called powerless, insignificant, or unworthy, but that's how masters describe themselves. Because when we lose, we've won, and when we succeed, we've failed. Other people will tell you what I'm telling you now. Live by the sword, die by the sword. That's pretty much what chapter 42 boils down to. See chapter 46 for more details. <laughs> so, that was a weird translation, the last one. I think he, I I think he was smoking something when he translated yeah. that. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what this means. Just <laughs> forget it. Right. He translated it in third person, and, you know. <laughs> anyway. Um, comments? The first part of it reminds me of Genesis. Yeah, Mitchell's commentary actually talks about that, and I'll go ahead. When it's called one, it is no longer the Tao. You know, when he says the Tao gives birth to one? Yeah. He said, when it's called one, it is no longer the Tao. When it's called the Tao, it is no longer the Tao. You know, like putting the name on, tagging God, boxing boxing God in. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and I'll go ahead and talk about what else. He, he talked about that all things have their backs to the female. Literally, the 10,000 things carry the yin and embrace the yang through the blending of the energy, which is the chi. And I know you've studied a lot of that, Craig. Uh, people hate to be orphans, widows, starvelings, yet kings and princes take these names as their titles. 
Therefore, sometimes you gain by losing. Sometimes you lose by gaining. What others have taught, I teach also, the violent will die, will not die a natural death. I will make this the father of my teachings. In other words, if you don't, this is the essence that we have to, we, we, we can't succeed with violence does not bring about just as what we think of as winning does not bring about uh, what we're looking for. Right. Carry the yin and embrace the yang. You know, this is another, I think another idea of, you know, we have the, uh, a lot of the translations you look at that, and the yin is considered the bad and the yang the good, the yin the black, the yang the white, all of that. But the more I read about it, it's not about tagging good and bad. It's about that it's part of this whole, Mm -hmm. you know, like night and day. Night's not bad and day good. They're both part of the 24 hours of the day. Mm -hmm. In the same way with the yin and yang. Mm -hmm. Just like the seasons. There's, yeah, go ahead. And then the chi is part of that too, right, Craig? How does the chi factor into that? Um, the, the, the way the way I see it, it's down to the energy. It's down to the it's down to basically an, an evolving energy that leads up to something bigger. Um, yeah, that the chi is what is the interaction between the two. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. Um, one gains by losing and loses by gaining. Well, that he says throughout the whole thing is, you know, unlearn everything, um, let go of your possessions, or or not let go, but don't have an attachment to your possessions or anything, you know, losing. Losing ourselves, really. Losing what you thought was real. Yeah. Isn't really real. I thought it was interesting how uh, he said, Hogan said, well, they all said it, but I like the way he said it best, that men hate to be called powerless, insignificant, or unworthy. Yeah. But that's how masters describe themselves. Humility. Exactly. Humility, quietness, tranquility. hmm Versus advancement, achievement, progression. You do quite gone, don't you? I'm sorry. You do quite gone. Yes. You, you yes. Here, there's, there's, yes. There's quite a bit of chi in that. Um, yes. A lot of that can it can be um, it can be a control as well. It can be like a like a breath control or something forceful, depending on how it gets used. Truly, so, is the weaker we get, the stronger we become. So I I learn when when things seem difficult or when I think when it appears I'm losing, I mean, did we make, did we get into recovery because we were on a winning streak? No. (laughs) I certainly did not. Okay. I made a bunch of money, had a lake house and all this stuff. I'm doing so great. I think I'm going to join AA. I can finally join AA now. <laughs> it feels so great. Yeah. Rehab. Uh, you know, you're you're talking about your achievements and you've done this and you've won that. And, you know, maybe now I'm ready. Maybe they'll accept me in AA now. <laughs> no, that's not how it worked. <laughs> But in embracing recovery, did I not get some of the greatest gifts by embracing recovery? Yeah. That was a, that was a discussion at the home group yesterday. That was that was a discussion at the meeting yesterday. It was um, how how grateful and how much we benefited from um, 
from losing from losing control. But we didn't really control anything to start with. But um, having the realization that we didn't control anything and we truly are powerless over everything, it, it opens up so many different doors to you. Um, and through admitting that defeat um, and that submission, you know, it, it just opens up a whole new world to you as well. Um, it's it really just such a it's an amazing it's an amazing subject. And I think that if um, I don't like to play the pop F game, but um, I think if I'd have worked a twelve step program before I started drinking, then I'd probably be probably in a much better position than I'm in at the moment. But you weren't ready for me, Craig. It took surrender. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, being able to embrace powerlessness, which I could not embrace losing before because mm-hmm. I was not designed to lose. I was designed to win. And I ran from loss, and I did everything I could do not to lose. Everything was about success. I had my value in life tied to how successful I was. And if I was not successful, it didn't mean that a business failed. It meant I failed. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference there. Uh, Yes. Yes. Big difference. But I could not distinguish that difference. All these things were me. So if I was successful, it was it was me successful. You see, it wasn't a separation. There was no separate. Everything was personal. Everything. Success yeah. and failure. When you put that into like in terms of relapse, how um, people feel about themselves when they relapse, and how hard we are on ourselves when it's actually it's the disease. It's really yeah. not. You personally, it's your disease is what's making you relapse. And, uh, you know, I think that that keeps people stuck a bit is when they relapse, how, how just self-loathing they become, you know, when it's really, it's really about this is a disease and most people relapse. We, we are not this body. Right. So... As long as we think of ourselves as being this body and this world being the real thing, then we're going to tie our value to what we do, what we have, Mm -hmm. our success in relationships or our failure in relationships or our failure in this life. We're going to tie our value to that. And that creates this separateness that makes us all alone. And for me, it would make me want to escape from this world. Mm -hmm. And I substituted alcohol to do that. Yeah. Yeah. The, The losing I think it's talking about is not losing in the way we think of losing, like, failure and loss and physical loss, I think it's talking more like losing our attachment to all the things that we thought were valuable that we find out are not. All those things we thought would make us happy that don't. That's the loss. That's the loss that helps us, you know. That's how I see it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, loss is not loss, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you gain so much by losing. Yes, and gaining <laughs> is not gaining. <laughs> you know, back to my favorite bumper sticker, he who dies with the most toys dies. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't win, he dies. <laughs> And he doesn't take any of them with him. They're all still there. And I buy them at auction. (laughs) (laughs) He didn't take one of those jet skis or nice boats with him. We all got those after he died. You know, there was nothing he took with him. Amazing. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That kind of puts it in perspective, you know. 
All the things we worry and stress about, none of it's going with us. Yeah, people who pinch pennies, you know, they don't want to spend a dime of their money and they have a ton of it, they die. That's why I'm poor. Do what, Greg? That's why I'm poor. That's why I don't have any money. (laughs) Uh, You're enjoying life. No, I'm married. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have any money because I'm married. Oh, that's shit. I don't blame Louise for that, Craig. Yeah, really, don't blame Louise. I imagine Louise is the reason you have two pennies to pinch together, to, to rub together. So don't start with that. <laughs> okay. <She holds> you <laughs> up. Yeah. <laughs> Gain by loss, loss of self, loss of attachment. How can I give up power today? What do I feel in control of would be a place to start. How can I experience more loss today? I'm going to pray today that I experience loss. (laughs) Is that a safe prayer to pray? It depends on what you want to lose. It's funny, Marla. I, uh, (laughs) I remember one time I was hearing myself pray, and it was like one of those things, like I was a third, like I was Hogan. I was the third person, and I was, I said, did I really just pray that? I was praying, and I said, God, I want your will in my life, like the third step, um, turn my will in my life over to the care of God. I said, Father, I want your will in my life today, regardless of what it takes. I was like, did I just, oh, shit, I just prayed that. <laughs> that's what I was like. Well, let me take those words back. You know, let me grab those because that that's a dangerous prayer. That's a prayer that will lead maybe to some loss, regardless of what it takes. You could pray to lose fear. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I pray for that every day. <laughs> fear. Um, I had a sponsee that couldn't, he couldn't get sober. He would just, he, he just couldn't get it. And I asked him, I said, have you prayed the prayer yet? He said, what prayer? I said, pray for God to help me get sober regardless of what it takes. He says, I'm not ready to pray that. I said, well, you're not ready to get sober yet either. Right. Yeah, that's true. But that is loss. That is a prayer that that's a prayer that could end up with some perceived loss anyway, (laughs) because it really is perceived. It's not real loss. It's perceived loss. I have a talking about loss. I've got a couple of things from some other readings. I want to read to see how that applies to this. This is from the big book. This is 418. Uh, Today I find it's talking about alcoholism is the best thing that ever happened to me. This proves I don't know what's good for me. And if I don't know what's good for me, then I don't know what's good or bad for you or for anyone. So I'm better off if I don't give advice, don't figure I know what's best, And just accept life on life's terms as it is today, especially my own life as it actually is. Part of that acceptance reading. But that goes back to winning and losing. You know, do I really know what loss is? Do I really know what gain is? And this yin and yang, I think, is about accepting the day as it is and not tagging the good and bad like we've talked about before right not tagging it yes not not attachment no non-attachment non-attachment and just accepting the day as it is i want to read you something else too this is from a course in miracles this is uh lesson uh 135 i think yeah 135 If I defend myself, I am attacked. But in defenselessness, 
I will be strong and I will learn what my defenses hide. Tell me that doesn't apply to winning and losing and losing's winning and winning's losing. That when I defend myself, I am actually being attacked. And in my, if I decide to be defenseless, then I may see what it was I was trying to defend. Mm -hmm. In other words, what I need to lose. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. So, so the real question is, what do I need to lose today? Where am I trying to be in control? Where am I trying to be the director? What part of my life am I not being powerless over? What relationships am I trying to control instead of surrender and let go of? What things in my work am I trying to be the chief and not an Indian, you know? What, you know, all those way analogies and names we could put on it. It applies. It does. Mm -hmm. Craig, you want to talk about the Derek Lynn a little? Yep. So he starts, uh, down produces one, one produces two, two produces three. It's kind of like one potato, two potato, three potato more. Three produces myriad things. Myriad things backed by yin and embracing yang. Achieve harmony by integrating their energy. What the people dislike are alone, bereft, and unworthy. But the rulers call themselves with these terms. So with all things appear to take loss but benefit, or receive benefit but lose. What the ancients taught, I will also teach. The violent one cannot have a natural death I will use this as the principle of all teachings. So what he goes on to talk about the, the, the one producing the two and the two producing three was where I got the idea of Genesis. Um, what I thought was originally was the one would be God and God produced Adam and then Adam gave, he gave, gave the ribbon, became Eve and then so on. Um, what he goes on to say about the one is that... Um, the Tao is a pregnant void, uh, an infinite field of nothingness bursting with potentialities. This formless metaphysical Tao gives rise to the oneness that will eventually give rise to everything in the physical universe. And what he says about the once the one's produced, the one represents the embryonic universe. As such, it begins with no opposites and no polarities and then distills into yin and yang. Before anything else comes into existence, these two energies become distinct from one another. Thus, the oneness of the Tao gives rise to the two. I go on to discuss the two. We're talking about the Qi, which is the two energies begin to interact. They swirled into one another, neither one able to dominate or overwhelm its counterpart. A balance emerges from the interactions with one another. This is a critical third factor, movement, circulation and rhythm all embodied in the dynamic dance of yin and yang. And talking about the dyna, uh, dynamism, yin and yang produces everything. Life mirrors this and in the interplay of male and female energies, resulting in reproduction. All living things are thus rooted in yin energy, the source of life, while moving to the rhythm of the active yang principle. And when he mentions achieve the harmony by integrating their energy, we are no exceptions to the above. The interaction of men and women perpetuates life and gives it meaning. This is important not only in terms of biology, but spirituality as well. When we, as men and women, integrate the yin and yang energies, we achieve harmony and glimpse the divine nature of the Tao. Another interpretation of this integration casts it in terms of approach to life rather than interaction of the sexes. It says we should be grounded in the yin principle, humility, quietness, and tranquility, while embracing the yang principle, advancement, achievement, and progression. Balance between humility, quietness, and tranquility, balancing with advancement, achievement, and progression. Okay. Living by the sword 
and dying by the sword. What uh, what do you think that means? Well, you've also got the mirror effect that, we, that you talk about quite a bit. Like if you approach things with uh, with an outlook of um, with an outlook of hatred, then you're going to get that hatred back to you. Whereas if you approach everything from a perspective of love and giving, then that's what's going to be returned to you. And I think um, it can go back to the one producing the two, producing the three. If you approach if you approach one person with love and humility, then that person's going to kind of recommend you. So you're going to get other people coming to you as well. So that one person you've approached is then going to be it's then going to multiply. So you have two people, three people. So if you want to look at it in terms of recovery, it can be it can be like a sponsor. Um, a sponsor has one sponsee, and then he, you know, he does such a good job with that when he gets another sponsee, and then it kind of branches out from that. Um, but yeah, I, I've seen the I, I've seen a lot of the mirror effect in it. So, so just what, a, yeah, you, you're gonna you, you're gonna get you, you're gonna get more in abundance of what you what you're given as well. So what you're saying, you could take that idea of, of birthing. Of and you could go back to the end where it talks about a violent man will, will die a violent death. You could say the inverse of that would be if we learn to live by love and the things that uh, uh, the positive side of that and, and how that produces in all of our relationships and in all of our life. That that begetting is an example of that too. It could be either way. So, so the thing that looks like loss, the um, the powerlessness, the insignificance, the unworthiness, it says that's how the master describes himself themselves. Could be that the master; those things are produced in the the master uses those things to produce the Tao in his life, the powerlessness that's needed, the and that's the loss that brings about the gain. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so if, uh, to put it in another perspective, um, when I was drinking, my life was just carnage. It was chaos. Mm -hmm. There was drama. There was drama all the time, and I was creating a lot of that drama, and albeit quite a bit of it was a moon head. Since I stopped drinking, since I gave all that up, and since I started approaching my life with a completely different outlook and a completely different perspective, everything's kind of calmed down. I'm meditating and I'm praying, and I'm getting a lot more a lot more serenity out of life as well. And I think because I don't have that negative energy in my life, I'm not receiving it back in. So, um, if you're talking about it in terms of um, life and death, I think if I can, if I can continue on this life that I'm on, then my end's not going to be my mind hopefully is going to be pretty tranquil and peaceful mm -hmm. and pretty quiet and not struggling. And it's hopefully quick as well. That would be a, that'd be a blessing. Um, but it's, it's not going to be, it's, it's not going to be the carnage and chaos that I used to be surrounded by. And again, a lot of that was in my head. I'm not, not saying my life or the people around me was creating that carnage. A lot of it was, we know ourselves how. Is it, is it most of it in our head anyway? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, this could be, this could apply to any situation, any relationship, any environment, any interaction. This whole chapter could, the way you're talking about, Craig. Yeah. Am I living by the sword, or am I living by violence in this relationship? Am I, you know, am I demanding? Am I pushing? Am I striving? Am I fighting? If I am, I'm producing some things in this relationship that are not good. Yeah. So this this I hadn't thought about it that way. Thank you, Craig. That's good. Huh. I was thinking about this, and one way I could see how much I'm still caught in the game, so to speak, if I were to write my uh, the words that would be said about my epitaph. Let's say I, I were to prepare to pass away today and write what I wanted people to remember about me. If it is all around my finan any financial achievements or the things, the attachments, 
or is it more around, would it be more about the people that I value in my life and those achievements, so to speak? That can tell you a good, that can be a good sign for you as to where you're at in this. If it's all about, you know, right. yeah. all your achievements versus, you know, the people you've been able to help or the things, you know, that, or what would you want written on your, your tombstone, you know, as far as a, if you were to have to write something today as to what you wanted to be remembered for in one sentence or in five words or less, you know, what would it be? And that would kind of, I know it's kind of morbid, morbid, but that's kind Not of, really. Not you really. know, I was thinking about that and I thought, gosh, you know, used to, it would be, I wanted, you know, when they wrote my um, obituary, you know, list all these things. I've, I've read obituaries where they were just all about all this stuff. You know, they did this and they were this and they were this and they were that, you know, and I'm like, who cares, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You've never read one that says he died with ten million dollars. Yeah. No such thing. No, no. I told you I was ill. Do I, Craig? I told you I was ill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't believe me. <laughs> uh, if, if you want to go, if you want to go down that thread, then all you need to do is read um, read a Christmas Carol. When yeah. um, Scrooge is yeah. with the third ghost, and he takes him to the the guys that the guys that dig in the grave, and they're talking about how how miserly the guy was. And um, I don't want to ruin the story, just in case anybody's not not read it. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, right? right yeah. it, it turns, it, Scrooge is the guy who's got all this money, and he kind of hoards it. And he, he's yeah. he's that absorbed in himself, and he never thinks about anybody else. And um, he, sees, he sees people struggling in poverty. And, He's, he's, he's with the third ghost, and these guys are digging the grave, and like, yeah, th- this guy, he's such a miser. And he's kind of worried about whose grave it was, and then the ghost turned around and said, it's actually yours. So unless you change your ways, this is this is how you're going to end. Um, so I think if Scrooge had worked a 12-step program as well, he maybe would have. Maybe he should have studied the Tao, you know? Maybe. Maybe he should have done, yeah. But, you know, that's a good way to think about – you could you could look at that and say, okay, how much am I still attached to all the things that I think are going to give me what I'm looking for? All these things we say are achievement and success, which it's okay to have those things and enjoy them, but, but as long as they don't have you and you don't place your value in those things, that's, that's where the rub is. That's where the problem comes. Yeah. For me. Marley, you want to take us into Wayne Forty-second. Yeah, forty-second verse. The Tao gave birth to one. One gave birth to two. Two gave birth to three, and three begat the ten thousand things. Ten thousand things carry yin and embrace yang. They achieve harmony by, by combining these forces. People suffer at the thought of being without parents, without food, or without worth. Yet, this is the very way that kings and lords once described themselves. For one gains by losing and loses by gaining. What others taught, I teach. The violent do not die a natural death. This is my fundamental teaching. So, Wayne Dwyer uh, highlights this chapter. He calls it living by melting into harmony. Uh, la, 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 la. The beginning of this verse reiterates what Lao Tzu has been saying throughout the previous 41 sections of the Tao. That is, the Tao is the hidden force that brings all of the creatures and substances that comprise the 10,000 things into being, as well as being the intangible that we think of as oneness or wholeness. All carry and embrace the opposites of yin and yang, or the feminine and masculine principles. This verse reinforces the idea that blending these seemingly opposing forces is the way to achieve harmony. Uh, I'm going to move on a little bit. Sure. Your infinite self that originated in and is animated by the Tao needs nothing to sustain itself. 
appearance, possessions, and self-worth are only necessary to the existence of your mortal self. Lao Tzu wants you to recognize this difference within the oneness that you are. He teaches that, you're, that you gain awareness of your Tao nature through the loss of emphasis on the physical conditions of your life, like non-attachment. In your oneness, you're likely to lose the Tao sensibility in proportion to the emphasis you place on worldly desires. At the same time, Lao Tzu emphasizes that death of the mortal self is influenced by the way you live. You will die as you live is the fundamental teaching for the mortal self. This is the balance that's required to truly melt into harmony with the Tao. The last several lines of this verse insistently drew my, intent, my attention when I was researching, writing, and meditating on this 40-second passage. I studied many translations of it, and I spent countless hours communing with Lao Tzu, gazing at his likeness in my writing space. I discovered that this particular verse was always interpreted with the same kind of dramatic emphasis. All said something similar to the following. I take this to be the father of teachings. Know this to be the foundation of my teachings. This will be the essence of my teachings. Whoever says this is my beloved teacher. And the one I used here, the one I used here, that is fundamental that is my fundamental teaching. My conclusion is that when you're violent in any way, including your thoughts, behavior, pronouncements and allegiances, then you're choosing to die in the same way. Of course, you'll draw your own conclusions about the significance of this particularly dramatic instruction of the Tao Te Ching. The insistence with which this teaching presented itself to me leads me to believe that Lao Tzu wants me to emphasize that its opposite is also true. That is, a person who embraces the Tao and eschews violence and hatred will live and die naturally which is in harmony with the perfection of the Tao. I keep thinking about Gandhi in this, you know, and that he met with violence. You know, he chose to live by, by nonviolence, and yet he, was, he died a violent death. But somebody can explain that to me. So I invite you to change your, the way you perceive what keeps you from harmonizing with your source. The birthing agent of all is also your ultimate place of return when you leave your body in that moment called death. You must be willing to give up your attachment to all forms of violence in your life if you want to melt into harmony. Hold on, hold on right there, Marla. Let's talk a minute. I like the idea of applying this to my everyday life, too, because I think if I apply it to the every day, then it's not going to be an issue of my overall life or how I die or whatever. You know, I, I think the big takeaway for me is that if this is a foundational teaching, which he says that it is, mm -hmm. that if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. I can apply that to relationships. I can apply that to anything, any interaction that if I'm forcing and pushing in that interaction and demanding and living by the sword and, you know, demanding my way, that's going to be the way of death. It's not going to end well. No, no, not. So the idea is that, and we we just we say this every week, just a different way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the same thing. <laughs> you know that we learn to live in love, and then we get love back. <laughs> really. It's basically That's it. what it's Do what? That, it's, that is the fundamental teaching of the Tao. Yeah. Learn to live in love. Learn to live in love. Learn. That you get what you give. That is our source. Is you know when we're born, we're just a bundle of love. It's just all the, the shit that comes with life as we become 
conscious that we, makes yeah. and we all really want to be loved that's what we want that is the that is our true the true nature is we really. just want to be loved and understood accepted like we are mm -hmm. loved and just just be able to be who we are and not have to pretend and uh, perform or care what other people think about us yes and that that's really all it is and this is just saying hey if you live by forcing it's not going to end well that, that's not the way to live and that's fundamental to all of uh, the teaching that we see in the Tao Te Ching same thing yeah all no. right, let's uh, let's finish up Dyer. Should we do do the Dow now? Yeah, let's do that. We All can right. do that. Let me move over to that. How about let's do the uh, read the paragraph before this exam? Yeah. If you All would. Right. So examine your attachments with the idea that you gain by losing and lose by gaining. Your attachment to objects, status, your culture, and even even other people prevent you pr from being free in the great way of the Dow. The more stuff that accumulates, the more you have to watch it, insure it, worry about it, protect it, polish it, distribute it, and identify with it. In other words, you lose harmony while seeking to gain. Practice giving your possessions away and loosening your need for who and what you have. Imagine strings attached to everybody and everything that you feel you own. Then symbolically cut those strings and be an observer rather than an owner. This is how you melt into harmony with the Tao. The poet Hafiz advises, start seeing God, I'm sorry, start seeing everything as God, but keep it a secret. Do the Tao now. Think of one person who may have wronged you at some time in your life. Someone who abandoned or mistreated you. Someone who stole from you, cheated you. Someone who abused you or spread ugly rumors about you. Spend one day putting all thoughts of revenge aside and instead feel forgiveness and love for that individual. Notice the difference in your body when you don't have violent thoughts. This is the essential teachings of the Tao. Mm. That is so true. Notice the difference in your body, the physical yeah. difference when you don't have violent thoughts. Yes. How much difference I know for me how how different I feel when if I'm angry versus when I'm not. I mean it just mm -hmm. makes me feel my heart racing the whole thing and it's all up here. <laughs> I can relate that to yoga poses, you know, when you're muscling when I'm muscling through a yoga pose and thinking, God, I gotta get this right, it never works out. It never it's never going to be right. But when you relax into it and not attempt to be perfect in it, it comes. And that's the same thing I'm finding with stress and with work and things like that. It's, you know, not striving to be so perfect. It actually makes me be more perfect at it. You know. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> We have kind of a tough group at the treatment center right now. Like, they're they're kind of unruly. And um, so I've been – I have been told by the people I work with that I need to be more authoritative with them because <laughs> I'm not being quite, like, I don't know, authoritative enough. <laughs> so um, – Part of me is, like, resentful against the clients for being unruly because it's, like, getting – I'm not in trouble, but, like, it's getting me told I have to do something different. Yeah. You know, but, like, that doesn't help anything for me to be, like, these clients – I mean, they're drug addicts just, like, entering treatment. They don't want to be there, half of them. Like, I need to be, be compassionate towards them, but – you know, I don't need to be like, ugh, you guys are so unruly. 
you know? <laughs> I would really? resent that. I would yeah. resent that and if I were new in rehab and somebody Right, and I'm not that. like that. I need yeah. to be more, more, I mean, not more like that. I need to be more just strict, I guess, fun. with them because I'm not, like, it doesn't come naturally to me to be, I don't know. I I don't know more. I guess I need to be more like get them in line. But there, I mean, there's another person I work with who's very much like that, and they really don't like her, and they get in shouting arguments with her, and it, I don't think that's therapeutic to them or her. It's not. People, so, we need compassion. We need a shit ton of compassion. Right. So it's so, scary. To be new and right. it's really scary. Right. So I'm mm-hmm. trying to find a balance between having them know that, yes, they need to pay attention in group and participate and not be talking all the time. Mm-hmm. But also, I don't want to be... I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say exactly. I think it's putting that energy that you know we we're talking earlier about putting that energy out there. Right. If, if you're putting the negative, just be talking about the woman that's shouting and screaming. She's she's getting that back because that's that's the energy that she's putting back out there. So that's right. what put back out there. Um, it's like Marla says, you know, the, the compassion's the compassion's one one of the most important things that we're needing because you know if, if you don't want to be that, then there's not really much you can do to change that person's mind. But you can you can show them the love that they're needing. You know, this this is why we're here, and this is what we can do to help you. And I think when people see that you're coming from that position of love and help and trust, then that's when the barriers then start to come down, and they'll they'll be more accepting to the help that you're offering. Um, right. Or if that feels, you can just hit them with a stick. <laughs> you can't hit people with a stick in the U.S., Craig. That doesn't work. I don't know. Can you do that in Scotland? I don't know, but you can't do that here. I'm sorry. Okay. That's violent. <laughs> Well, you know, this this balance that we're talking about, though, Kate, um, if you can come from a place of love, they would be more receptive to what you're saying, but that doesn't mean you still won't need to be firm. Right. You know, so if it were me, I would find out what my guidelines are and have consequences for going over. Like if they're not supposed to talk and there's consequences for them talking, then you would need to enforce the consequences. Right. You could do that from fair, but uh, firm, but fair. Yeah, that's yeah. But, But you could do that from a place of love or a place of anger or a place of duty. If you could get it up to a place of love, like it might help or it would for me before a meeting, if I took a few minutes and meditated and just sent love to each person I thought was going to be in there, then mm-hmm. go in and, you know, follow the rules because when they're talking, it's interrupting someone, you know, someone else can't pay attention that may, may be there seriously that, that wants to recover. Right. So right. I would for sure, enforce the guidelines, but I'd try to do that from a place of love rather than from a place of anger. Because that mirror we were talking about, this is an excellent example of what we were talking about today. Because if you come in with the sword, (laughs) no matter what you say, you're going to get that anger back. You're going to get violence back. When if you can come in from a place of love, you may get, you know, some resistance, yes, but you would be more likely that that people, you know, everyone's not going to automatically do everything and be because they're just not. But if you come from a place of love, I I think that what your intention would, would be much more successful than coming from a place of anger or a place of duty. Or, yeah. you know, something of that nature. I don't know if that makes sense, but. It does. I would yeah. try to get to a higher level of consciousness before I went in and started the meeting. 
And I would also be very familiar with the guidelines and know what to do when and do it to the T and not, you know, not tolerate any, you know, uh, any slackness on that. You know, if they're misbehaving and they're whatever consequences you have set up for that, then there should be consequences. But that, that's how I would, that's how I would approach it right or wrong. I don't know. I'd, I'd be curious to how that works. Yeah. Cause that's a real life example of what we we're talking about today. And, and even that was talking about the balance between the two. Right. Yin and the yang, you know, and there's always that balance. But, and you also have to be your authentic self. You know, you're not a, an angry, authoritative person. You're, you're a kind, compassionate person. Right. But, but you can do that without being angry though. That's what I said. Yeah. 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 You don't have to be, you know, angry to, you know, for folks to follow the rules. Right. No, they don't need that. They're angry enough. I always get anger back when I'm angry. No matter what I say, I can say the perfect thing, but if I say it when I'm angry, all yeah. I'm going to get is anger back. Yep. Yep. Like arguing with a salesperson, I always, I'm always behind somebody who's arguing with a salesperson about something. Like, you know what? You can't win it. You're not going to win. No one's going to win. No. Does that help, Kate? Yeah. Hey, let us know next week. I want to know how it goes. <laughs> I will, yeah. Don't I'm cry. glad you're here. We get so much out of you. <laughs> examples. Real yeah. life struggles with the Dow. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. We're going to see how, how Kate loses this week. That's good. <laughs> Kate, you're such a loser. (laughs) (laughs) Marla, now I'm not going to go that far. (laughs) I I mean it in a good way. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, it's a great thing to be a loser. (laughs) That might be a good title for this week. I think that's probably a better title. It's a great, what did I say? It's a, it's great to be a loser. (laughs) <laughs> that's catchy it People is actually like, what? what are you talking about i gotta hear this yeah <laughs> I, I think i'll use that okay what do you think craig i think i missed something because i was on the phone yeah we lost you you'll have to listen to the podcast oh. <laughs> <laughs> i called kate a loser <laughs> that is good. he was hoping kate would be a loser this week <laughs> Why don't, we, why don't we call that the table? That's what, that's what Buddy's going to do. <laughs> All right. Any any comments? I think we covered this pretty good. Yeah, we did. <laughs> you know, it'd be good this week while you're praying and meditating to think about how you can embrace just letting go of these things that we thought were valuable that are not. How can we be powerless in whatever it is that we're doing? How can we, you know, it goes back, if you're looking at it from recovery, those first three steps from a, if you're in a 12 step program, uh, how can I be powerless? How can I, how can I trust God? How can I, you know, how can I turn my will and my life over pertaining to whatever it is you're talking about? And that really is the loss that brings about the gain. The real thing. Yeah. Good. Good. So if that's it, guys, we'll do this again next week. See you then. Okay. (laughs) See y'all next week. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. For more information about the RRC, the Recovery Revolution Community, Go to omarpinto.com and click on the link that says Recovery Revolution Community. Once you join the RRC, you'll be able to participate in this meeting and many more live, plus access to a video library of past meetings and many more benefits for being a part of this growing community. Thanks again for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share this podcast with your friends in recovery.